<laughs> I'm running out of coffee by this point. <laughs> mm. Delicious, delicious stuff, as always. Hello, everyone. It's so awesome to see all of your beautiful, smiling faces here. Thanks for tuning in and welcome to my channel. Today is super special, like extra special, actually. Today, I'm finally talking about editing. The subject that I love, the subject that I can talk for ages, so much so that this video might as well be 10 hours long. But to make this episode extra juicy, extra special, I just want to share my favorite technique, the technique that I think stays with you for the rest of your life, forever. Let's go. Story time. A couple of years ago, my pinnacle of editing were presets. I loved them, I couldn't get enough of them, and I was using pretty much them on every single image. And I mean, they are great. They are amazing time saviors, and I love how with literally almost one click, they can do magic to your images. Something that didn't look really good in RAW would be absolutely amazing after applying the preset. And I mean, they do those global adjustments, they take care of your exposures, your shadows, your highlights, obviously your contrast, and most importantly, the color grading. But then, when I was looking at my images, I just couldn't understand and how are they not looking as good, as saturated as some of the images that I kept saying on Instagram feeds of some of my favorite creators. So the question was, what am I missing? What am I not getting? How can I edit my images to the same level? How can I make these raw files into these final images? How do I do that? Well, you do that by using the brush tool and this is how it works. The beauty of the brush tool is that you can make local adjustments on the image, which means that you're not globally affecting the rest of the image. You can make just adjustments in the specific parts of the image and you can highlight the subject or the story that you as a photographer want to communicate with the rest of the audience. It might be the face, the expression, it might be the part of the landscape, or it might be that illuminating energy that you felt walking down the streets of Paris from this beautiful cafe. So that's what we're gonna be concentrating on today. I have prepared three different images Images that will show how versatile the brush tool is and how easy it is to apply. So let's jump into Lightroom. So the very first image I'm going to concentrate on today was shot in Emmanuel Vittorio shopping center back in Milan. It's probably one of my favorite images. It's such a gorgeous, stunning building. And this image, I just really, really love it. I have already applied all the global adjustments, AKA I have edited with my preset, but as you can see, it still looks pretty dark. And when I was shooting this image, I actually made a very cautious choice of exposing it for the highlights, as I knew that I will be able to bring all the details and information from the darker parts of the image. And that's pretty much what I really want to try to achieve here with the brush tool. So we're going to be doing two things here. First of all, there's a girl in the middle that I still feel is extremely dark and I want to highlight her a little bit more. So then as a viewer, when you're looking at this image, your eye literally just goes straight away on this girl. So I'm going to use a very small size brush with a very little feathering around and I'm going to draw literally within the... I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna try to draw within the uh, you know, contours of her body and making sure that I'm erasing um, all the necessary bits that I really don't want to highlight. So yeah, I'm gonna bring a little bit more exposure. I'm gonna bring a little bit more clarity and texture. And this is how it looks before, and this is how it looks without. But I still feel like the bottom of the image, like if you can see from the Prada and Versace all the way down, is a bit too dark. And I remember very vividly when I was doing, like when I was shooting this image, there is so much detail from the shopping center and I know I can bring it up. So I'm gonna use a slightly bigger size brush tool with a little bit more feathering and I'm gonna just highlight all this area from Prada all the way down to the Versace and then expose it a little bit more bring my shadows up a little bit more and a little bit more texture and clarity. And this is how this image looks before and after. That's it. A three-year-old me, <laughs> an experienced editor, will probably toss this image into the bin thinking that it's not worth saving whatsoever. But now, by using this technique, I've saved this image and I think it's pretty dope. The one thing I remember vividly from our Milan trip is that how many fashionable and stylish people there were. And honestly, this image is a very great representation of that. As with the previous image, I have already added the global adjustments, aka used my presets. And to be honest, it looks pretty great as is. It's one of those very rare instances that the natural light is so great that I would be very happy to export this image and post it on my Instagram. But I really, really like it. So I want to spend a little bit more time 
just using the brush tool to see how far I can take this image. Looking at it now, I see people on the right hand side that I really don't feel like adding anything here and usually you have kind of two ways of how to mask them out of this image and one of them is going to be use the clone tab <laughs> clone stamp tool and if you have those editing skills and you have the extra time by all means go ahead and do so but i'm just going to use the brush tool to darken this side and be done with that so i'm using a big size brush tool with a lot of feathering around and kind of just highlighting all this shadowy part and dragging the exposure down and in order to balance this, I'm going to do the opposite on the left hand side. I'm going to use another brush tool to highlight this part of the image and again, increase the temperature and increase the exposure. And this is how it looked before and that's how it looks now. The one thing that I've noticed, I still feel like his face is kind of blending in with the background too much. So I'm going to use again the brush tool to draw on his face and I'm going to expose it up a little bit more and create a little bit more separation be between the background and his face. And I'm kind of liking what I'm looking on already. But the very last bit that I'm going to concentrate on is his hat and his jacket. Here I'm going to be using dodge and burn style technique. And if you have already shot portraiture or if you have done any portrait photography and you have edited them before, you kind of probably heard of this technique already. So this is going to be super simplified version of this. I'm going to highlight his highlighted parts and I'm going to darken the shadowy parts. And for that, I'm going to be using super small sized brush because the name of the game is to not go full on. I'm going to use not full on opacity brush. And what I mean by that is stay with me here. I'm going to just click on the brush tool and I'm going to scroll past the settings and you will see here uh, under the brush you have size feather and flow the flow is the only thing that I'm going to be adjusting here and I'm going to just drop it down to from 74 to like 30 here we go yes and now if I'm going to make an adjustment it's going to be very subtle very nuanced and that's kind of what we're trying to achieve here and you just sit here and you paint in And look how it was before and how it looks now. Pretty amazing. And we just literally done all of this with a brush tool only. Broke on the background, separated his face and dodge and burn his clothing. Et voila. The final image that I'm going to be editing here with you today is again from Milan. It was a beautiful, gorgeous, super hot day and the sun was about to set and I saw this tunnel and I was waiting for the tram to come into the frame and after about 15 minutes <laughs> it finally happened and it's one of those occasions where the patience definitely have paid off. So let's just kind of jump in and work on that image. Again, the foreground for me looks a little bit too distracting and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use a very big size brush with a lot of feathering around. And I'm just going to kind of work around this tunnel to make it a little bit darker. And of course, some of you might say, hey, Polina, why are you not using vignette here? And the reason for that is if you look at the bottom of the of this image, you will see the rails and there is a little bit of light on them. And I want to keep it that way. So then these rails are leading towards the tram and it just makes it look so much better. So the second thing I really want to work on here are the houses on the backdrop. So when I was taking this image, these houses were this incredible saturated yellow and orange houses, which I don't think being translated here on this image and reason for that is that my preset is quite monochrome I don't really like saturated colors so I usually just kind of tweak them after I have done all the global adjustments and that's what I'm going to be doing here using kind of a medium sized brush tool I'm just going to brush in on the houses itself and I'm going to add a little bit more exposure a little bit more clarity and definitely a lot more saturation and that's how it looked before and this is how it looks now already so much better. The last bit I really want to concentrate on is the tram itself. Usually I would probably use just one brush tool to kind of paint it all out and increase the exposure. But what would that do? It would make this whole tram look more 2D, more kind of flat as if somebody just photoshopped it in. And A, this is not true. And B, this is exactly the opposite of what I'm trying to achieve here. I'm trying to add a little bit more depth, a little bit more dimension to the image. And the way I'm going to do that is actually work on different parts of the tram 
separately and adjusting the exposure accordingly. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to highlight the very front of the tram um, and expose it the highest. So then you feel like it's closest to you. And then the further down the tram goes, I'm going to decrease the exposure and work on all those parts separately. And obviously there is this right hand side, which is the most highlighted as the sun is directly hitting it. I'm going to highlight it even more and increase the saturation even more. So it kind of just stands out a little bit more. And basically, this is how it looked before, and this is how it looks now. Just by spending a little bit more time and coloring in all the different parts of the tram, you kind of creating that depth straight away. And I like how it looks now so much more than it was before. <laughs> of the brush tool is that you can create as many adjustments, as many layers as possible. It can be as simple as you want it to be, or it can be as complex as your skill set allows. Important bit is that it makes you excited about your images, it makes you excited to share your images with your family, with your friends, and this is kind of what we are striving here to do. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you enjoyed learning about this technique, and I really hope you will use this technique in your photography so here it is guys that's all from me i'm classic Polly, and i will see you in my next video these are awesome i want to say more but i can't but these are cool i want to say more but i really can't